Thanks to Linode Cloud Computing for supporting this episode of SciShow. Go to linode.com slash scishow to learn more and get a $100 60-day credit on a new Linode account. The definition of a carnivore is simple enough. Any animal that eats other animals gets to wear that title. And many of these creatures are part of the order Carnivora, a group of mammals with a shared lineage that mainly hunt their food. Carnivora literally means meat eaters. But despite their name, not all carnivora eat meat. For instance, pandas are in this order, even though they basically eat bamboo all day. But as weird as it sounds, pandas actually have a lot in common with their meat-eating carnivore cousins. And scientists only recently figured out why. Now, all creatures in the order Carnivora share a few key traits. Sharp teeth, claws, and a gut full of bacteria that can digest meat. Pandas clearly have the teeth and the claws, and surprisingly enough, researchers recently found that they have the gut bacteria of a meat eater too. In fact, their guts look way more like those of meat eaters than vegetarians. Plant eaters often have enlarged small intestines to slow the passage of food, giving their gut bacteria more time to digest all the fibrous material they eat. Meat is less fibrous, so meat eaters don't need as complex of a gut to break down their food. And despite the fact that pandas eat up to a third of their weight in bamboo each day, panda guts are short similar to those of meat eaters. Pandas did evolve from meat-eating ancestors, and even now, giant pandas will occasionally deviate from their vegetarian habits, snacking on things like insects, bird eggs, and even small mammals. But at most, this makes up about 1% of a panda's diet. So scientists were curious why these animals didn't evolve digestive systems better suited to eating plants. Finally, in a study published in 2019, researchers found that the answer has to do with bamboo, which pandas started eating when they split off from their carnivore ancestors millions of years ago. The authors of the study took a look at the nutrient profile of this plant, and they discovered that the parts of bamboo preferred by pandas are high in protein and low in easily digestible carbohydrates, more like meat than other plants. So pandas' ancestral gut microbes were actually pretty useful for digesting this particular plant. And it turns out that while most plant eaters' diets are relatively low in protein, Pandas seek out a high-protein diet, much like meat eaters. The same team of researchers figured this out by tracking wild giant pandas as they ate. They noticed that these animals migrate long distances to munch on shoots and leaves of two different bamboo species that grow at different elevations. Every year, the pandas start out by eating the leaves on the bamboo at the lower elevation, then they eat the shoots of the same plants, which started growing later in the spring. From there, they move upward to the higher altitude species, eating first the shoots, then the leaves, then they head back down again to start all over. By analyzing what the pandas were eating, the researchers determined that the pandas were selectively eating the parts of the bamboo that had the most protein, and also the least fiber. Plant-eating animals are typically good at digesting fiber, thanks to their gut microbes and long, small intestines, but since pandas have the guts of meat eaters, it's much harder for them. They can't easily digest the more fibrous, cellulose-rich parts of the bamboo, so they seek out the shoots and the leaves. Pandas' diet can help explain how they evolved from meat eaters to vegetarians millions of years ago. By selectively eating the high-protein parts of the bamboo, ancestral pandas could transition to being almost solely vegetarians without a drastic animal anatomical overhaul. And that's why today, we are left with this surprising member of the order Carnivora, munching bamboo despite being built like a carnivore. No matter what you eat, your consumption of SciShow videos is always appreciated. Thanks for watching, and thanks to Linode Cloud Computing for supporting this video. SciShow and Linode have a lot in common. We both do our best to make knowledge accessible and approachable, and we both make tons of helpful videos that explain how stuff works. There are hundreds of video series on Linode's website and YouTube channel that explain every everything from building your own video streaming site to Linux for beginners. They devote a lot of resources to providing you with resources because Linode values user-friendly services. So you can watch any of those videos for free, which is another thing we have in common. And you can explore even more of what they have to offer by clicking the link in the description or heading to linode.com scishow. That link gives you a $100 60-day credit on a new Linode account.